Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday to you today. Our reading today is from Hosea chapter 8, and we read from verse 4. They set up kings without my consent. They chose princes without my approval. With their silver and gold, they made idols for themselves to their own destruction. Throw out your calf idol of Samaria. My anger burns against them. How long? Will they be incapable of purity? They are from Israel. This calf, a craftsman, has made it. It is not God. It will be broken in pieces, the calf of Samaria. They sow the wind and reap the whirlwind. The stalk has no head. It will produce no flower. Were it to yield grain, foreigners would swallow it up. An interesting little piece of the scriptures in Isaiah. And I really want to just concentrate a little bit on that verse from verse 7. They sow the wind and reap the whirlwind. You know, a person that goes out to sow in the old days had a leather bag and they had a whole bag of grain with them that they went out to sow the seed. And they had gone and plowed their field and prepared their field. And gradually they would grab a handful of seed and carefully with their wrist and arm, they would flick and throw the seed across the soil. And then often they would have to replow the soil to plow it back in. Now, anybody who knew they went out to sow, you had a couple of issues that you had to be careful of. You don't want to sow too early in the morning because the sun would come out too late and perhaps burn the seeds and it just wasn't going to be terribly good. So sowing was probably done in the later afternoons, but often the wind can come up in the afternoon. So you have to choose your time to sow very carefully. The seed is relatively light. And if you were throwing your seed and there was a lot of wind blowing, the seed would be blown away and scattered and wouldn't be able to land in a very well-organized pattern on the ground. Throwing seed was quite an art in itself because you can't just take a handful and toss it out into the soil and let it all just land in one huge big lump because the plants would grow too close together and wouldn't get enough light and wouldn't get enough moisture and wouldn't get enough nutrients from the ground. So it was quite an art to actually throw seed out onto a field in those days of Jesus' time. And the people would have known something about it. In the Old Testament, of course, we didn't have fancy plowing machines. We didn't have machines that could instantly plant for us. Sometimes each individual seed was planted in a certain furrow and then covered up very carefully. So planting was a really important issue in those days. And also this is really a reminder of Isaiah talking to the people. What did the people do? They have neglected to sow and they didn't sow in the things of God. In fact, they had neglected God's word and instruction to the people. They had lost their relationship with God. They had built calves to worship. And they weren't using the time that they had available, which they should have put into their relationship with God to grow and develop. And therefore, the saying became, it was like sowing with the wind. You sow with the wind, throw into the wind, and you're just not going to get a good return. The only return you'll get is a whirlwind. If the seed didn't take hold and it didn't grow, then there was no plants in that field. And if a whirlwind came along, it picked up the sand, it picked up the seed, and it carried it all away. And in fact, you would never get a crop. There was no return on your crop. And farming is an amazing way of reduplicating what you do. For every seed that was thrown out, if it grew, it produced a new head of corn. And it produced sometimes a hundredfold what was actually sown, if it was sown properly and well. And you see, God uses this image to speak to the people about what are they doing with their time? What are they doing with their spiritual relationship with God? And maybe during this time of COVID, it's a time for us to examine what are we doing with our spiritual relationship with God? Yes, we cannot get together in church and worship as we normally would. And many people have decided just to pack up their religious and faith and Christian life and just ignore it completely until perhaps churches get reopened again. But during this time, others have said to me, it has been a very special time for them to grow in their relationship with God. And we can all learn something about this. 
during this time that we are under lockdown and during this time that we cannot fellowship and worship as we would like to, we can also see this though as a special time of drawing closer to God and God alone. Without the entrapments of all the other issues that we normally would do within a church service, but to have fellowship with God and God alone. And you see, I'm sure that we really work at our relationship with God, that after this time of lockdown, when we get back together at church, when we get back to some level of normality again after all of this in a few months' time, things could be very different and our relationship with God could be enhanced rather than doing nothing. And you see, this is the time perhaps for us to sow in our relationship with God, perhaps to pick up and read a new spiritual book, research some spiritual topic, examine and get back to the Bible and spend more time and make a commitment to read our scriptures and let God's Holy Spirit interpret them and teach us something new. And so let us use this time that we have been given in lockdown. Perhaps that we used to have other activities that kept us pretty busy. But let us find and make that time, even in this lockdown, to really grow in our relationship with God. And God will let it grow and God will reward us with a plentiful harvest of a new spiritual relationship with God alone. Let us not neglect our relationship with our Lord, but let us use the time we have got to grow in that little faith and relationship and to learn to trust our God completely. May God bless you as you sow every day. Where do we sow and what do we produce and what is the outcome down the road? If we sow into the wind, we will only have the whirlwind to come back at us. And so let us grow and learn to love and trust our God. And now let us pray to that Lord. Father, we thank you that when we put our effort into the good things that you call us to do, there is a plentiful harvest. We pray, Lord God, that you would send our people into your harvest to spread your word into the world this day, that people might come to know you and know your love and the great promise you have of eternal life in your, your kingdom. We pray, Lord God, that we can use this time that is left to us in this lockdown to grow in our relationship with you and not to ignore our faith, but to develop our personal relationship, our personal prayer life and our personal devotion in our scriptures to reading and for your Holy Spirit to interpret them aright for us, that we can follow your ways and still learn new things about you. We ask your great blessing upon us all. And we pray particularly for the province of Gauteng, where the infection rate is now increasing very rapidly. We pray, Lord, for our own town of Neisner. We pray for the protection of people. We pray for the Eastern Cape, where there's also a great deal of increased number of infections. We pray for the doctors, for the nurses, for those that care, and those that are working on a vaccine to find a way, Lord, to prevent this virus from coming to people and infecting them. We pray, Lord, that you would help the medical world to find a vaccine that we can end, Lord, this coronavirus. We pray, Lord God, that you will give them the wisdom and inspirations and, Lord, let them use the abilities that you have given them to find a cure and for us to bring this to an end. We pray for those, Lord, that are hungry within our own country and those who do not see a way forward. We pray for those that are frustrated and not able to cope. We ask God for your strength and your comfort to be with them. And Lord, may they too come to know you and know the great peace we have of knowing your love and your protection with us. We commit our country to you and pray, God, for your great blessing upon it. Strengthen it. Lord, although we may not see it, may, Lord, you sow in your harvest within our country of South Africa and that let there be a plentiful harvest when it is all over. Bring about your will, Lord, and may people come back to know you, put their faith and truth in you, not in the calf of idols that the people hold on to, but Lord, for us to find the truth and to know you and hold on to you for all that lies ahead in this world. May you bless us, Lord, and may we draw near to you and grow in our relationship with you this week and through this time that we are under lockdown. And we ask this in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless you all.